In this video, I will show you the API management, APIM capabilities in the SnapLogic platform. For APIM, we will start with the precondition that you have a pipeline already defined. My pipeline has a simple mapper snap, and I have a task on that pipeline called simple task, so it's a very simple example. The main thing I'll cover will be the policies. Within the policy manager menu, I have different policies. I can also add different policies so I can do authorized request validation, cores restriction, call authenticator, IP restriction. There are other ones that I haven't necessarily defined here, but in this demo, we'll go through the ones to find. You can also import and export your policies to either make a backup copy or you can move them to the next organization, for example, dev, test, or prod environments. The first thing I'll show you is the anonymous authenticator. So you'll notice that all the policies have the expression enabled, so you can insert expressions here. For example, you can say request.method equals get or post. Anonymous is what I'm defining the role to actually be, so anyone that comes in unauthenticated will get the anonymous role. And I'll show you how we do authorization in a second for API key authentication. For a given API key, e.g. 123123, the role that comes in is staff. I can also associate student role with a different API key. The key can come in the header or as a query parameter and that can be specified. Authorized by role is where it gets a little interesting. Given the role that I defined earlier, I can now set the scope level. I can say that, you know, maybe anonymous gets access to tasks 1, 2, and 3, but staff gets access to all. GitHub role gets access to tasks 7 and 8. For a given role, you can define the task condition like this. You can also define one role twice if you want to split the expression or make it multiple pass so that it is easier to identify tasks. Another policy type is client throttling. When I examine this policy, you'll notice here I have the request.method equals post, so we're only throttling the post type methods. You can also define expressions with different request types. In client throttling, you have the service tiers, and so I'm defining two services tiers for anonymous and staff. Anonymous can do two calls a minute, while staff can do five calls a minute. Besides the optional service tiers, you also have to define a default tier. So if something is not defined in the service tier, e.g. for GitHub role, it will default to the default tier, which is 500 requests per hour in this example. Also, many of our customers and prospects are interested in generic OAuth too. So this will be a popular policy type. Oftentimes, people have a user management system that they want to leverage, and so then that is they can use either the generic OAuth or they can also use the callout authenticator. They both are a little similar in how they work, but for OAuth, it'll have the ID, secret, and the callback. And then you essentially get a response from the call, and then you're parsing the token here. For GitHub, you call the user API, rather, and then you get a response back here where you're parsing the authorization, and then you put the actual dollar users from the response. Then, you also have teams, so that it is the user and the role, and then right now, I'm hard coding the role, but you can imagine it'd be something like $teams.login to parse out the role that GitHub gives back to you. Let me show you three demos. The first one will be the anonymous call policy. Then I'll do the API, then I'll show you the throttling as well. Now I'm in Postman. I'm going to do a post to an API endpoint. I don't have any input parameters defined, so this will be an anonymous call. And since I have that policy enabled, it should work successfully. When I click Send, it works, and I get API call successful message. I will click Send again, and I get the same response. Then if I do a third time, it fails because it is hitting the throttling limit. Throttling limit was only for post calls, so if the API request changes to get, it works fine. That should be fine. Now I go back to SnapLogic and disable the anonymous policy. It's disabled once I hit save and the configuration is pushed to the SnapLex. Now, anonymous requests should no longer work, so I should get a 401 unauthorized response. Now, I can then do the parameters token with the value of 123123, 123, which was for the staff role. 
So if I send for this get request, it goes through successfully. I will change this back to post and change the authentication to a header, do x API key as 123, 123, and then hit send. And that is successful. So if I fire this off a few times and I switch to the headers within Postman, you'll see there's a throttling refill and service tier which the client is informed about. Let's do this post call a few more times until you get the 429 too many requests. The response here says retry after 30. If I try again, it should fail one more time. Now I will change this to a get request. The request goes through because I'm not throttling on that method with the API policy. So to summarize, I showed you a variety of APIM policies that can be defined and enforced with SnapLogic API management. Now I want to show you how you can define related API policies within the SnapLogic hierarchy. For example, I can define the throttling limit at the highest level that says throttle all my tasks to 5,000 an hour, because you don't ever want to exceed that for any type of task that you have. I have a hierarchy of APIs, and you will see applied policies here within the hierarchy, applied policies that are bolded. In the hierarchy, you'll see that there's IP restrictions at a higher level where you can specify a whitelist or blacklist of IP addresses or ranges. One thing to note is that once you define an IP restriction policy at the lower level, it'll override the top level IP restriction completely. If you have roles defined at the top level, then you can override them, those specific roles here within the APIM local scope. The last thing that I want to show you is the dashboard for the APIs. We have different charts that show you the performance of your APIs with respect to three KPIs, request per minute, error percentages, and latency. Latency is broken down into request, response, and target latency. And then the error percentage is presented for request and target errors. So for example, if I'm being throttled or I'm not doing the right authentication, then that'll be the request error. Target errors would be if my pipeline fails to execute. In the case of latency, request latency is the time it takes for the request to go from the client to the API management, time to process, and apply the policies. Response latency is just the time it takes to go back to the client when the pipeline finishes. And the target latency is the time it takes for the pipeline to execute. At the bottom of the page, you see different API details. I can also expand the time horizon to 24 hours. I will see more APIs. You'll see latency or error percentage numbers for each task in the table. This API tab is in addition to the existing pipeline runtime details you get. You can click on a task here in API Dashboard. It'll take me back to the manager. It'll show me the list view of all the calls for this task that happened here. Now I will go back to the Dashboard's task view. I will filter by the API calls and then drill down into the different metrics, such as the number of executions, duration, etc. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more about SnapLogic API management capabilities, please visit snaplogic.com.